Hello everybody, my name is Haro. Welcome to this video series where we are solving core forces problems in Python. In this video, we're going to be solving problem 275A, which is called Lights Out. It's a bit of a tricky problem, but at the same time, it's a very easy problem. Let's just go ahead and solve it. So let's just read the question once, guys, before we attempt to solve it. We are given that Lenny is playing a game on a 3 cross 3 grid of lights. Okay. In the beginning of the game, all the lights are switched on. Pressing any of the lights will toggle it and the side adjacent lights. The goal of the game is to switch all the lights off. We consider toggling as follows. If the light is switched on, it will be turned to off. And if it's off, it will be turned to on. Okay, so that's how that works. And uh, he has spent some time playing with this grid. And now he has pressed each light a certain number of times. Okay, given the number of times every light is pressed, you have to print the current state of every light okay so how that looks like um, and the question is given that in case uh, a light to be off you represent that by zero and a light to be on you represent that by one okay so that is there and one more thing that this question is giving you for the input is that these cannot this can be so this will be a three cross three row okay so this will be a three cross three input and the output will also be three cross three and this will be the current state and this will be how many times, how many times each light is pressed, okay? So that will be each light is pressed, okay? Uh, and that depends and that's value will range from 0 to 100, okay? So that will be say 57 for example or 32, this can be any value, okay? And how do you find out? See one thing to clear now itself is when you're toggling lights, right? So there's only two states, there's either an on state or an off state, right? Why do I keep spelling on like this? Okay. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if the number is 1 and we have said that initially uh, all the lights are switched on, right? So, this is something that you need to keep in mind, okay? So, if initially the light is on and then if it's once, it is toggled once, it will move on to off. But if it's toggled twice, it will go back to on. If it's toggled three times, it will go back to off. So, that is something that is keep on repeating. So if you just do a modulo 2 operator over here and if the answer is 0, that means it will remain on. If the answer is 1, that will remain off. That's it. So this number between 1 to 100 or 0 to 100 really makes no sense uh, as long as we apply this particular thing right here. So once you're doing that, how do we solve the rest of this question? Let me just go ahead and uh, explain a bit about the question as well. So first of all, this is what we are, this is the light switch, okay. So initially all of this is on and what they're saying is, let me just say I'm going to, uh, so in this input right here, I'm saying this particular light I'm toggling. So that is light 0, 0, right. And what I'll do is if I toggle this, what that look like is the side adjacent toggles. This also toggles. So that will be now 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Similarly, we're toggling this light also right here. So if we're toggling this, both of these will toggle. And then that will look like 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, sorry, 1, 0, 0. I think this is the answer right here. So, and let's say, for example, I'm toggling this again. Now that will look like, see, here side adjacent, there are four, okay? So then this will obviously become zero, but all of the four to the side will become one. 0, 1. That's how that will look like, okay? So, this will again be a very brute force solution. What we're going to be doing this right now is very, 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 very simple. We're going to be taking two lists and these will be 2D lists, okay? And uh, that will look like something like this. So, this will be 1, this will be 1, and then this will be 1, and this will be all the elements of the list. There will be totally 9 elements and this will what the list will look like. And this is the input. That is also something that we're going to be taking to a list, okay? So, similarly, uh, let me just erase this. We're going to be taking this input value right here, 100, zero, zero, and uh, this is followed by 000, zero, zero, and we're going to follow this by 001. Zero, zero, okay, and now this is something that we're getting as input, and this also we're going to be converting to a 2D list. And once we're getting this, what we're going to do is we're going to be iterating over this list, and we're going to do for i in j, for i in j, for sorry, for i in this list, and for j in i. Okay, so that will be for every row and then in each row for every column okay that is what we're doing by i comma j you can do this as row comma column however you want to call it and we're saying if this number percentage 2 is 1 we can go ahead and perform the toggle operation if it's percentage 0 
uh, sorry, percentage 2 is 0, we don't have to perform the toggle operation. So then whatever we have to define something called as a toggle operation. What the toggle operation does is if it's 0, it returns 1. If it's 1, it returns 0. That's it. Okay. And what we're going to do, we're going to do this toggle operation not only to this value right here or this particular element, this i comma j pair. We're also going to do this to i comma j plus 1 and i plus 1 comma j in this case. In this case, what we're doing? See, we are going to be doing that to i comma j minus 1 and i minus 1 comma j as well. See, in cases like this where we are dealing with the edge, uh, edge 0 comma 0, there is nothing before it. So, we have to put an edge condition there and in the here also there is nothing after it. So, we have to put a condition there as well. Okay. So, except that rest of it will remain same. We are going to be changing this value, this value and every adjacent value to that uh, to whatever this toggle value is. Okay, so let us just write down all the conditions for all these eight uh, values right here because all of these eight have some sort of restriction in this and this middle value is the only one which can freely do all operations for all adjacent edges. So first things first, i value here will be 0, this will be 0, 0, this will be 1, 0 and this will be 2, 0. Okay, similarly, this will be um, 0, 1, 0, 2. Okay, and this will be 0, um, sorry, this will be 1, comma 2 and this will be 2, comma 2. Okay, so first things first, what are the conditions for i? Okay, so i will only be dealing with the row values. So that will be anything that is going out, down or up. Okay, so if i is equal to 0, it cannot go to the up, right? So it can only go to the down. So it only goes to down. If i is equal to 1 and j is not equal to 1 okay in this case right here uh, and if i is equal to 1 it can do both up and down if i is equal to 2 in that case it can only go up similarly if j is equal to 0 it cannot move to the left it can only move to the right if j is equal to 1 it can move to both to the left and to the right and if j is equal to 2 it can only move to the left. Okay, so if we define this even better, I think one thing you can see is for i value of less than 2, this down operation we can make it common. Yes, similarly for i value of greater than 0, this upward operation will become common. Bear with me here. Similarly, for this j value, for j is less than 2, this rightward operation becomes common. And for j is greater than 0, this leftward operation will become common. This is something that we can use for if statements and we can say if j is less than 2, do this. If j is greater than 0, do this. If i is less than 2, do this set. If i is greater than 0, do this set. And in case of that 1 comma 1 condition, both of this take place. So that code will work. Okay, so I hope you are able to understand what we are trying to do here. If you are, I highly recommend you to code it. If not, uh, stick around with the code. I will try to explain more of that. So let us go ahead and attempt to solve this problem now. Let us just break everything down uh, little by little so that it becomes a lot easier for us to solve. Okay, so first things first, let us just get this input. So we are given three lines over here and let us and these three lines are always constant and each line will have three elements that is also something that's constant so let's just go ahead and take three rows as input okay let me just write that in small yeah let's just do list of map of int comma input dot r strip dot split this will take one row as the input and convert that to a list let's just duplicate that twice to take that value and these will be our three rows okay and then creating the matrix okay so that will be let's just call that list and let's just do r1 r2 r3 okay lst not list uh, and then we are going to be having a, an initial state as well so initial state uh, this is something that is very big so let me just call that something like say answer and i'll just put initial state okay all on and so what does all on means it means that it will be one comma one one comma one okay so let's just duplicate that a couple more times and yeah we are done with the initial state as well so one thing to keep in mind is we are going to be defining a toggle function as well uh, and so let's just go ahead and do that so define toggle of say some switch a in that case if a is 0 let's just return 1 and else we're going to return 0 okay uh, yeah that is that 
okay so now this major part is done let us go ahead with the iteration part iteration through the matrix okay so we do for i in range of 3 for j in range of 3 this is something that you can do then what do you do you're going to do first things first if and this is the checking part is there now we are going to check if list of i of j this list is this input list percentage 2 is equal to equal to 1 only in this particular case are we going to do the toggle function right if it's 0 there's no need for any toggle so what do you do first first things first toggle that particular switch so that will be answer of i comma j will now be equal to toggle of answer of i j okay this thing is done next we have to deal with the adjacent switches so in that case we are going to be dealing with some boundary conditions so as we discussed first things first let us check if i is less than 2 in that case let us just go ahead and i plus 1 so we can look back over here right so for i less than 2 this download operation works which that means that will be answer of i plus 1 of j will now be equal to toggle of this same value right here that will be answer of i plus 1 of j okay and what other cases will be checking next we are going to do if i is greater than 0 in that case this upward thing will be common right so for i is equal to 1 and 2 in that case what we can do is we can just copy the same thing and we can say i minus 1 of j and we can just do ahead and do the toggle of answer of i minus 1 of j similarly for j less than 2 this right hand side thing is common so j will be j plus 1 okay so we can just do answer of i of j plus 1 will be toggle of this same value right here okay and then we have a function for for if j greater than 0 right so that will be j is equal to 1 and j is equal to 2 this left hand side thing is common so that will be given as answer of i of j minus 1 okay so that will be given same thing we just do the toggle function of that particular value right here so once we are done with this our answer is over how do we print printing this answer to the user right so one thing to keep in mind is whatever we are working with now we are working with integers right so we cannot print this set of integers to the user by using this particular method called join okay so we cannot do this join of list here to print all the um, uh, integers because first things first this only works on strings so we have to convert this answer integer into a string format so how do you do that so converting our uh, answer to a list of strings okay so that will be a list of list of strings okay list of list of strings uh, to be more accurate now what we'll do is for i in range of 3 our answer of i will be nothing but string of element for element in answer of i okay so that's it so if we once we do all of this we can just go ahead for uh, for row in answer we can just go ahead and do the uh, dot join function so print nothing dot join of that particular row so if you go ahead and run this now we can see that both of these tests passed let me just go ahead and copy and paste this code on code forces as well so that you can see that for yourself uh, yeah so that's it guys maybe it went on a bit long maybe you guys if you guys didn't understand i recommend you to watch this video again you'll definitely understand what we're talking about here um, this is a very great question again and uh, as you can see the code is accepted if you guys have any alternate logics on how to solve this code let me know down in the comments if you guys have any doubts as well let me know down in the comments and i'll try my best to answer them all of this code as always is there in the github link to that will also be in the description thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video until then bye